the betting, uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Number two, it's the start of the bar plot at the Fort Start Maiden Plate. It's over 1400 meters, and you need to get that bar plot bet on by 13 10, 10 past one. Well, we bring up the field and have a look at it. And uh, when you see that field come up, you'll see that there are two scratchings here of numbers three and nine. So it's a field now of seven runners that will go to post. And uh, with these two scratchings, I think, but uh, if you had any confidence with number one, Daring Dash, your confidence will certainly grow after the scratching of number three, Always Shining. So this horse, Daring Dash, from the Waiho Mowing Stable, who will be having his first start on the poly track. Uh, just uh, looking at uh, what has happened to date uh, with his career, well, he was well beaten first up. His second start, there was huge improvement behind a very talented horse who we'll see on Hollywood Bets Durb in July, they call Great Plains. And then last time out, finding one better. He does have the right profile against this type of field, the way he's been training on. But before we get to that, I think uh, let's go to a rerun of the horse that I've been waxing lyrical about, call number one, Daring Das, and we'll see if Rael shares my confidence. Acclaim. Rich Folks Hoax okay, goes look, right look. in. It's still Daring Dash past the 200. The pressure's on from Famous Warrior and French Flame. Daring Dash is still clinging to the lead. Famous Warrior's trying to close it down with French Flame. Daring Dash just holding on. Famous Warrior's coming. Oh, I think Famous Warrior maybe from Daring Dash and French Flame, but it's very close. Well, that will refresh your memory, Rael. Uh, having a look at that replay, it was a tight finish between three runners. He looks like he's got the right profile. All he needs to do is handle the surface. Yeah, Liz, I think the surface is, a, is the only question mark with this horse. He's got everything in his favour. Gate one, he's, he's got the experience on his side. Narrowly denied last time out. And um, I think he's going to go one bet in this race. I think he's going to take a power of beating. Banker in all bets for me. It is a start of the bar pod. He's at five to ten. I can't see him missing out on the top two, and uh, I think it's going to take a good one to beat him. Brings the right form to the race. He ran behind Great Plains in his penultimate start, and uh, I think Great Plains looks to be a serious, serious racehorse. And I'm looking forward to seeing him on uh, on July day in, in the gold. What's it? The Golden Horseshoe over 1400 meters. I think he's going to he's going to be one of the leading lights there. But I think uh, this horse in this race, well well placed here by Wayo Mawin, and uh, I think he's going to take a power of beating. When you start having a look at results around the country and you see these odds on shots getting beaten, do you start playing cautiously or you just play it race by race? These, I, w I wouldn't say I play cautiously. I think uh, you've, you've got to charge the horse on, on the form that they bring into the race rather than charging the horses that have been beaten. And if the, the Danton from Santon had to get beaten in race number one, he's at 8 to 10, I wouldn't be cautious because I think there is a Another horse in the race that, that could get his you don't measure, think but it could be a, a trend thing. No, I don't think it could be a trend thing. So no, I don't think so. I think that uh, I think the horses will win on their merit if if they are because too we short. Have some, some no, we have, we have. I mean, I horses. mean, Ridian last weekend is is a pure example, and he comes from the Great Plain form line. No type of run, well beaten, but uh, I, it, it's hard it's hard to look past certain horses in certain races. And Ridian was one of them. It was hard to look past him, but I guess it, it happens in racing. It, it happens, but uh, I, I can't see it happening in race two. Yeah, because that is uh, the way you're going to have to see it here in race number two. You either all in in the bar pot with number one daring dash, or if you're playing for the result and for those that have been playing against the grain, they're collecting some decent dividends. So if you're going to cover number one daring dash, there are punters that are listening out there, racing fans, they say, you know what? Let's try and beat this odds on shot. Give me two horses. I'd include number two, Bryn the Magic, at 14 to 1. I think he could make good improvement over 1400 meters. And, well, maybe maybe the six horse for Trifectas and Quartets because I think the step up in trouble suit him. But uh, I'd, I'm not sure he can win. I think he could run into the money though. So two and six. Two and six for Rail. I'm going to go a straight line exact here, numbers one and eight. Flying Rainstorm is going to be the horse that's going to run second if Daring Dash wins. If it doesn't, 
Well, you could get a nice dividend. You seem to like the fillies, eh? Yes, this race, I think that she's rightfully placed as she gets her sex allowance and the way she's been racing, having had, what's it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or oh, not six, my eyesight, two, four, six places on the bounce. That's what she's had. Uh, number six, Flying Rainstorm. I think a consistency could certainly be rewarded with another stake check, and I'm hoping it's that second stake check if number one, Daring Dash, wins. But uh, Barport players, I'm sure this will be uh, with the most tickets on hand, race number two, horse number one, Daring Dash. Hi, it's Donovan Everett here from Cape Racing, and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Intrabet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pool Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.